Jumbo. Tumsi Fumungu. Tumsi Fumungu. Hallelujah. I am determined to learn because I consider myself your family. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be in the midst of your people. I pray that you would speak with clarity, with simplicity, and with authority. That there would be no one in this place that would leave here with misidentification. But they would know that you have designed them with an expected end. Have your way. Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I want to first, before I get into this message, honor your bishop. He is such a blessing to know that God does still connect you to people that will help you go further in life. And I just honor Bishop Jimmy and Pastor Alice. I honor you today. Let's thank God for their gifts and for their fathering and mothering in this house. Hallelujah. And I want to acknowledge my spiritual son. I haven't acknowledged him none this week, but I do want to acknowledge him now. He flew in with me from the United States. Alan, would you stand up, please? This is Minister Alan. Hallelujah. He is not only a minister, but he is an actor. He does movies. Yes, he's in many movies back in the United States, and so I'm so grateful that he's with me. Hallelujah. I asked the media to, to put in your bulletin the themes I'm going to share with you today. Hopefully all of you have a bulletin because I'm going to give you 12 laws and one act of the Bible. 12 laws that were shown to me by the Holy Spirit. And I want you to write them down as I, as I read the scriptures. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise God. We're going to go to the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. And I want you to be prepared because I'm going to stop in between reading scriptures to have you write in the empty, empty slot that you see in the bulletin. Amen? You have it? That means you have to keep this bulletin and rehearse the study. Amen. It says, now Peter and John went up together. The first word I want you to write down is the law of agreement. Agreement, the law of agreement. Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. Number two, the law of timing. The law of timing. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which was called Beautiful. They laid him daily. Number three, the law of routine. The law of routine. And they laid him daily at the gate of the temple, which was called beautiful. Number four, the law of excellence. The law of excellence. To ask alms from those who entered into the temple. Number five. The law of access. The law of access. 
who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. Number six, the law of focus. The law of focus. Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Number seven, the law of expectation. The law of expectation. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. Number eight, the law of content. The law of content. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand, right hand and lift him up. Number nine, the law of support. He took him by the right hand and lift him up. The law of support. And immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he leap, leaping up, stood and walked and entered into, entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Number 10, the law of progress. The law of progress. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Number 11, the law of visibility. The law of visibility. Then they knew that it was he who set begging arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And number 12, the law of all, A-W-E, and wow. The law of all, A-W-E, and wow. Somebody say, wow. Say it like you mean it, wow. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit gave me this message to share with you this morning because over the past several days, you as a people, Deliverance Church of, Zimmer of Zimmerman, have been preparing for the next level that you have been given life for. Over the course of my life, I have experienced a methodical and intentional and strategic God that no man knows his ways nor thoughts, the Bible says in Acts, or, um, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. No one knows his thoughts no ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways and his thoughts. Yet God promised that he would have a future and a hope for his people. When we read this text in Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 10, we are seeing Peter and John, number one, moving in agreement to go to the temple. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, it says, verse 
the law of agreement, again, I say to you, if two of you agree on the earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. I want you to ask your neighbor, do you agree with me this morning? If they do not reply, turn to your other neighbor and ask them, do you agree with me this morning? Because when you have agreement with someone, you will begin to discover that the enemy cannot come into the mindset to make you think that God is finished with your life. God is not finished until you see all that he's promised his children to see. And it will be not just for you, but it will be for generations to come. Someone say, I'm carrying generations to come. So God wants us to understand that when they walked together, they were moving in power. Whenever Jesus gave them authority, the Bible says he sent them out by twos in Luke chapter 10 verse 1, 70. Two people in agreement moves in power. One can chase a thousand, but two can chase 10,000. So when you have agreement, you are to stay close to them. Amen. If you do not have agreement, then you need to find someone that you can have agreement with. Amen. Amen. So they walked in agreement. Someone say agreement again. To go to the temple. And this is very significant and strategic. The Bible says they went to the temple on the ninth hour, which is 3 p.m. to pray. They went on time, in time, to have an encounter with a man that was needed to be healed. God never lets time dictate his plan. God dictates to time because God created time and time has ears to hear God when it is his plan for you to receive what he's promised you to receive. Someone say out loud, I have something to receive. They went to the temple. They were going on time, in time. And I want you to really hear this. This is very strategic because in my studies, this temple was a common temple that many people would go and pray. Jesus himself would go to the temple. The Bible declares in, in uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 22, that this man was over 40 years old. The man was over 40 years old whom this miracle of healing had been performed. In other words, the Bible says that he was 40, which indicates that Jesus himself saw this man at the temple, but yet it was not the right time for him to be healed. But Jesus knew he would be healed. That's why the Bible says we must have faith and we should never let time dictate the promises of God. Someone say, I have, the, I have the promise of God. Say it again, I have the promise of God. Jesus went past this man, family, because it was not his time to be healed. Yet, the healing was inevitable because it was written in heaven. And God knew the time that he would be healed. Someone say, I'm in God's time. Say it again, I'm in God's time. Hallelujah. So this man was being encountered with time and purpose with two individuals. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. Hallelujah. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. In other words, the Bible says that, G that God is the ancient of days. Before we begin our life, God has already finished the course. 
That's why the Bible says that the just must live by faith. That we're not called to live by sight. And that's why we're called a peculiar people. Because the world wants us to live the way they want us to live. Based upon what we see. But we don't live this life based upon our eye gate. We live our life based upon the word of God. When they came to this man, this man was clearly spoke of that he was laid at the gate called Beautiful Daily. Someone say daily. So it was a routine that they would lay him down, family. They would take him to this gate daily. They would take him. Who are they? They that was associated with him. They concluded that he had to be taken to the gate called Beautiful because he was a lame man and he only could be a beggar. So his associations determined what he could be because of a state of not having his limbs move correctly. And he allowed them to call him by name, which he accepted because of associations. They made him known as a beggar. They did not even give him a name in the Bible. They just called him the lame man, the beggar. And I'm here to tell you that his routine become, became daily, family, because of associations. He was only lame in this body. He was not meant to be lame in his mind. Yet the people that he associated with, concluded the only thing he could do was beg at the gate. So they gave him a spot there to beg. And I'm here to tell you today, don't you ever let people give you a name that's not the name God's giving you. Because you're not made to be something less than what God sees you as. This man was called a beggar because that's what, he, that's what they told him he would be. And he accepted it for years and asked for alms. He could speak, he could see, and he could hear, and he could think. Yet they kept him confined because of one issue. He was not able to move. Somebody say, but the devil is a liar. Because you and I are never meant to let anybody put us in their category based upon their opinion about us. Lay daily, family. Daily. And this time, the Bible says that they laid them at the gates called excellence. He didn't know what was about to happen. Yet God knew it was time. And when he encountered Peter and John, they were going to give him access. Someone say access. Access to a world and a place that they've, he's never been before. And I'm telling you over the past week, who's been here all this week for the conference by show of hands? Hallelujah. For those who did not come, maybe you go to Facebook and look at the, look at the video. It was really powerful. Great speakers were here today. And it was nothing but a setup for you to receive the word that God has for you. God is not through with you yet. Did you hear what I said? God is not through with you yet, family. There are people that conclude because of time that has gone by and they've gotten older just like this man. This man was 40, over 40 years old, the Bible says. So I can imagine what he was thinking, that he would always be in this state because of his age. But age has nothing to do with the promises of God. You can be 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and even 90, and God will still interrupt what's necessary that you would become what he declared you to be. So never let AIDS conclude your future. If he can use Caleb and tell Caleb he would see the promised land 
after he was over 90 years old, he was still able to live well in the promised land and good health. Hallelujah. So this man has now encountered Peter and John. And the Bible says they told him to look at us. Look at your neighbor and say, look at him. Look at him. In other words, don't let your focus be off of the prize, which is God. Press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. All other grounds are sinking sand. But Jesus is the solid rock we're called to stand on. In other words, if you hear bad reports, if you hear doctor reports, if your finances have been very challenging, focus on him and the promises of his word. Do you believe his promises are yea and amen? Hallelujah. Peter said, focus, look at us. In other words, I could imagine that because he's been commonly sent to this are set at this gate called beautiful that he would know who people were and they would know him so imagine people who did give him alms were going by when Peter said hey look at us he wanted to make sure that everyone who would normally give him alms would continue to give him throughout the day Peter said hey hey look at us because today you ask for alms but you are about to get legs. Some of you don't realize that God wants you to look at a bigger picture. Don't just settle for what you need now. God will supply your need, but there's something bigger. And you know what God shared with me, family? Throughout my course, I've learned how to manage and how to deal with little. My mother and I, we managed. We never had a lot. But he taught me that when he released more, I managed better. I did not spin riotously. I did not take for granted what he blessed me with. And then he said, I want you to give back to people. Amen. So this man was looking for arms, but he got legs. Legs that will enable him to move without having people tell him what he, where he needs to go. Legs that would keep, create a new atmosphere and a new mindset about who he was. Amen. And ladies and gentlemen, I am convinced with all of my heart that he had the point that he did not see the true meaning of the blessing that God was about to release to him. Because he came into the atmosphere just expecting the same thing that he would normally get. Just like sometimes people come into a setting like this, not expecting that much just to hear a word of God and go home. But this word has been documented and made purposely for you. Because he's telling me to tell you, do not be careless in the next several weeks because something major is about to come your way. And you have to expect it. Don't be surprised, expect it. Someone say, I am expecting, I am expecting. You got to have an expectation because faith says, I believe God. I believe that there is more than this. I believe God. So there has to be an expectation. Peter and John had the continuity of giving him something that they had. And that was the Holy Ghost. They had the power. Someone say, I got the power. I got the power. Even when it's getting hectic, it's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of hectic. But I got the. You got to say that within yourself. That means that no devil, no demonic forces, no crisis, no debt, whatever comes your way will stop what God wants you to see in your life because you got the power. There's got to be an attitude within that. God did not give you a piece of him for you to be defeated by a defeated devil. I refuse to let something that's been defeated by God defeat me because God dwells inside of me 
And when the devil sees you and I, he sees God in us. Hallelujah. So this man, glory to God. Come on, Holy Spirit. This man literally was about to encounter something he never encountered before. John and Peter represents faith and love. Peter was a man that was known faith. Jesus said, Peter, I'm praying for you for Satan. I'm praying for your faith for Satan wants to sift you as wheat. So he was known as a man of faith. John was a man of love, the one whom Jesus loved. So when they grabbed this man's hand because they asked him to stand and rise, they didn't just wait for him to do it. The Bible says they took him by the right hand, not the wrong hand, the right hand, and pulled him up. In other words, from here out, don't you let anyone make you believe that, that, that you cannot do it. Have someone who wants to see you get up. Have someone who you know that will support you to make what's been called to come forth in your life help you move and get up. Hallelujah. Do you have any support today? Ask your neighbor, will you be my support this morning? If they say no, turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, will you be my support? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So God will give you support. And this man had the support because I can imagine in his mind that when Peter and John said, take a, take a rise up and stand, he looked at them like, are you crazy? I've been here for over 40 years. They said, give me your right hand. I'm going to help you get up with the word that was spoken into you. And the Bible says as they pulled him up, his by his legs got strengthened. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God's about to interrupt your life and there are going to be people that will come into your life that will pull you up where God wants you to stand. Hallelujah. God says I'm bringing people that will help you, that will be very influential, and that will see something in you that you don't maybe see in yourself, and he's going to help pull you up. Hallelujah. The Bible says that, they, that he stood up, but he didn't just stand. Hallelujah. They said he was walking, leaped, and praised God. Someone say, walking and leaping and praising God. Come on. Walking and leaping and praising God. One more time. Walking and leaping and praising God. Did you hear that? Now listen. This man has been lame all his life. How then can someone who's never walked never had their equilibrium right, walk and leap. Because God was letting him and those who were about to see him that he was going to do something that he's never done before. You know that when a child is learning how to walk for the first time, they, they, their equilibrium are like, is like this. They're trying to make sure they walk. They don't just get up and walk. No, they, they walk like this. But this man, when he was touched by the Holy Spirit, he immediately started walking, leaping, and praising God. And God told me to tell somebody in here, I don't know who you are, but you're here. God's going to do something extraordinary, something that you've never experienced in your life. I'm talking about he's going to give some of you some creative ideals. Things that you never thought of before. Things that you've never done before. You're going to be an amazement to those who know you. You're going to have creative ideas. And I declare for every entrepreneur in here that you're not here by happenstance because God's about to expand your business. Hallelujah. He's about to expand your life. That your children's 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 children would be blessed. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, he walked, he leaped, and he praised God. Because he knew that it was only God that could have done this for him.
Hallelujah. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus that this man was not going to be the, known as the beggar anymore. See, when God does something so miraculous like this, your name change. Hallelujah. That means that when people see you, the next one is called that they saw him and they, were, they saw him in vision, the visibility of his blessing. God said that he's going to show people who've known you for years the visibility of the blessings and the hand that he's had on your life, all your life. He sustained you. He kept you. But now he's about to open up the doors that no man can shut for you. I'm telling you, it's time for you to receive this impartation and not be like a normal mundane person like, oh, okay, no, no, I believe. Do you believe today? Hallelujah. This man was so in awe, he stood up, he walked, he leaped, and he praised God. The Bible says that he went into the temple with them. He didn't stand outside, he went inside. Hallelujah. And he didn't went in, he didn't go in this walking. He was what? Leaping and praising God. I'm here to tell somebody, if you have the faith just to walk and leap, and praise God before it even happens. You are literally displaying that God is not through with my destiny. That there is something greater and bigger in me that has not been revealed yet. And you will see it at the end of the crossroad, which is the time of God. Say, my time is now. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Your time is now. Deliverance Church of Zimmerman. It is now. Someone say, it's now. it's now. Do you believe that? Yes. Hallelujah. When they saw him, the people were amazed because they knew him. They saw how he was at the gate. They saw him folded up, lame, asking for alms. And I'm here to tell everybody in here today that people will remember you. They will remember you. They will remember you, but they will not know that when they see the fullness of who you are until you tell them that he was God, because this man went back and told the priest that I don't know what they did, but one thing I know, I can walk, I can leap, and I can praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm convinced with all of my heart there's some all and wows in you that God is preparing for people to see that he has never been finished with you. There is something in you that you are about to receive from God, and I'm telling you that it's going to happen for those who have the faith to believe. Do you believe today? I'm not convinced. Do you believe today? Do you? Turn to your neighbor and say, do you believe them? Do you believe your neighbor? Let me see. Do you believe today? Yes. Neighbor, do you believe him? Yes. Everyone didn't say anything. Everybody said, mm. do you believe your neighbor is about to be blessed yes. above their imagination? Yes. That this is a season that they're not going to get the normal. That God's about to open up something extraordinary for them. Something that only God could get praise for. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So in my conclusion, family, I want to say this to you. This is very important. That God says, don't let your days stay normal. Every day expect the unexpected with an expectation. Believe that this is my day. Someone say, this is my day. I want to leave you with a word that I tell my church, and my church, say, they, they, they say this loudly. I want you to say this from here out. Say, I am outstanding. One more time. I am outstanding. Outstanding people, family, have a driven sense of purpose and refuse to let naysayers stand in their way. Their mission in life has nothing to do with surviving because they prepare their life 
by preparing for personal growth and development. Outstanding people, family, wake up each day realizing that God kissed them first and said good morning. Do I have any outstanding people today that know that God is not through with you yet? That you believe that there is more for you because you are carrying a generation that will be blessed because you were believing that God is not finished with you. Amen. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? If you believe that, give God a thundering roar and a praise because you know it's coming your way. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want you to keep, raise your hands above your heads. This is something I want to give you. Please hear me. This message was not just a sermon. It is a message of preparation for you. You, from this day forth, will never let anybody tell you who you are. God has already concluded you will not be less than what God said you would be. And you will never have to be a beggar or a person that needs somebody to help them. You will be the one that help others. You will be the one that will be above and not beneath. You will be a lender and not a borrower. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak generational blessings over your life. That what you are carrying would not just be for you, but for future generations. That you are looking beyond the scope of your own issues, but you're believing God is going to do something inside of me for many others to come. In the name of Jesus. So I speak a blessing over your life in the name of Jesus. That you have not seen your best yet. And there is an encounter that God's about to give you. Give you too. Give you. It's coming. And I declare in the name of Jesus with the boldness of the apostolic authority that I have. I declare that it will come within the next 30 days. It will come in the name of Jesus. It will come in the name of Jesus. That your expectation would be the faith that you need to prepare the way that what you are needing will come more and abundantly. In Jesus' name. If you believe that, give God a thunderous shout in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 